You know, thanks, Jesus. I appreciate that. Now, would you just leave me alone? I'll see you in heaven in 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 years, whatever it is. Just leave me alone from now until then, and I'll be good, and we'll be good, because you already did it all. Right? So, I'll see you out there when I get there. That's really how it works. Well, why not? Why don't we want to live that way? We could, because that's the freedom we've been given, to choose that kind of life if we want to. There are always repercussions for living that kind of life, I know that, but but we could. God would still love us the same no matter what. So why not do whatever it is we want to do? Think about this for a minute. If somebody came along, let's say, let's say um, the bank was going to foreclose on your nice big house and, and you don't have anything to pay. I mean, you're done. You've got nothing. You've lost your job. You've lost any money you had. And and you're going to lose your house. It's in foreclosure. They're going to come down tomorrow, and they're going to take it. They're going to kick you out, put you off in the street. And someone comes along. You don't really know. It's like a parent or something. Someone comes along and says, you know what? We're going to pay for all your mortgage. You're never going to owe a dime again. All that money you owe, I'm just going to pay it off. You're free and clear. It's your house. Nobody can ever take it from you again. And you say, Thanks. And you go on your merry way. In fact, you may even throw a, like a, a mortgage burning party at your house. You know, where you take the, the mortgage and you put it in a fire and everybody celebrates everything else. And you have all your friends and relatives and stuff over and burn my mortgage. And you don't invite the person who just paid off your mortgage. Yeah, there it did. What does matter? I don't have to invite them. They didn't say, I'll pay for your mortgage if you invite me to your party afterwards. They just said, I'll pay off your mortgage. And you never invited the party. In fact, you never talk to ever again. You just kind of ignore him like he doesn't even exist. What kind of person would you be? The narcissist at minimum. You know, just say a really horrible person would do something like that. So let's take that step one, that, that story one step further. Jesus paid your sin debt off in a miraculous way that made him go through pain and suffering that he in no way deserved. He was tortured spiritually and physically. Not only did he pay off the mortgage that you couldn't possibly pay, he chose to build you a new house. It wasn't just like you're going to pay off your mortgage for this one. He said, you know what? That's nice. But I'm going to build you something a whole lot better than that one. I'm going to build you this mansion. Take me to his mansion in the sky. Up in the eternal paradise of heaven, whatever in the world that it means. I'm going to take you to be with me up there, and I'm going to build you the most incredible place you've ever imagined. There'll be no debt on it, not a penny ever owed for anything, no taxes, no utility bills, because the light bill's already paid for, because Jesus is the light, you get it? Uh, nothing. You owe nothing when you get here. Not a penny. You can never pay me back for this. And it's forever. It's going to be the most incredible place you could ever imagine living forever. And you don't have to pay me anything. So he goes beyond paying off our mortgage. So what kind of people would we have to be to take all that for granted and choose not to invite him to the rest of our lives on the journey to that mansion? What kind of ungrateful people would we have to be if we said, hey, thanks a lot. See you when I get there. Stay away from my life now. See, we can do that. We can do that. That's, legally, we can do that. We, we don't have to pay him back for anything. We can't pay him back for anything. So we can just ignore him. But then I think it would be really bad people. I don't know if he's really bad person. Galatians 4.7 says it this way. This is why you really don't want to do that. Since you are no longer a slave, but a son. Since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. So even more than all the things he did by paying off our mortgage here, by giving us a new mansion with no, no debt on it, by paying for our sin, past, present, and future, he bought us out of the slavery sin cycle we have. He paid off everything. He built this awesome place, and if it wasn't all enough for that, Adopt us into his family. He says, it's not just I'm going to pay off your debt. I'm 
going to give you everything I have. You're an heir to everything I am. What I own, you own. And you don't have to pay anything for it. God gave me a, a great daddy number. I'm so glad you were this morning. And I'm forever thankful for the things that he taught me and the way he encouraged me in life. One of my heroes of life. I would do anything I could to help him be saved, no matter what. He's got a lot. But even more so, my other name is God. He adopted me. He's the eternal king, and it's not just giving me life, but giving me eternal, wonderful life. And he said, I'm going to call you my son, too. You're my child. Why wouldn't I live for him? Why wouldn't I be so grateful I just want to live for him everything I do and say, everything I am? Since Jesus came alive in the flesh for you and me, he did all this for us. I pray that each one of us would choose to come alive for him. Don't waste the rest of your life being an ungrateful person who says, gee, thanks, I'll see you in 80 years. Spend your life loving on him who loved you so much. Not to be paid, but simply to show how much you love me. I guess what I'm saying is this. It's not about me anymore. This life that I live now in, in the flesh, is that I live for Jesus. What else is there? There's nothing else that matters anymore. I mean, we have to live our lives. That's great. We love our families and our jobs and our relationships. Those are all good. Those are all horizontal things. They're great. But ultimately, my life is to live for Jesus. I pray that yours would do exactly the same thing. That, that you would see in perspective what God has done for you through Jesus, and you would say, I, I just want to live for Him now because what He's done for me. Past, present, future. What He's given me. I don't deserve any of it. But because I love Him, I want to walk with Him. I want to invite Him to the party of the rest of my life. God, we are so thankful for you and for the way you provided a way for us through the incarnation. Lord, I confess we forget so often just what you've done for us. We take it for granted. But Lord, I pray that you would teach us what it means as your sons and daughters to love you with everything in us. To say thank you on a constant moment-by-moment basis for the life we enjoy, for the debt that was paid and for the future. Lord, help us to love you, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you.
Sundays, and that money goes to help out people in our community, people who have needs uh, in the body and in the community both, that we can just help a little financial assistance with them. So if you feel like giving to something like that, we really appreciate it. Um, Lord bless you, and you have your day with us. 